Hey everyone, welcome back to Yellow Jacket Garage. And uh, as you can see, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to swap out the master cylinder. I know we've got more of the project going, uh, more of the brake connect and everything else, but today's focus is just going to be taking out the old master cylinder and putting in the new power unit. Really simple process. The old one is a, a single pot or a, a single cylinder instead of this one having the front for the front brakes and the back for the rear brakes and it has the power assist module or the canister on here too that we'll have to tie in but that's for a future episode so what we're going to do pull the old one out i've already gone ahead and uh, put some penetrating oil penetrating fluid on the, the three bolts that hold that one in i haven't messed with the one that's under the dash yet that should be just a simple pull that apart and the pin comes loose and it'll come out so we're going to start by taking off the one under the dash take off the brake line, and then we'll pull these three bolts. The old one should slide out. This one hopefully will slide back in really pretty easy and uh, bolt it in, tie it in, and then uh, do that. But before we do the final install of this thing, we are gonna have to bench bleed the master cylinder, which basically we'll show you that as we do it. But I'm gonna take fluid and uh, with in this kit they supplied it. And so it's in a syringe, we screwed squirt it in there, fill this up, squirt it in there so we can get the, the air out of there or as much of the air as possible out of the system before we actually hook up the brake lines to it. But we'll get to that when we get to that. So anyway, uh, let's dive into this project and uh, see what it does. All right, so cut us a sprout. I've got Burke holding the camera and so Basically what we're going to do is this cotter pin that's right here, we're going to bend it back, pull it out of the way, hopefully, if I can get the cotter pin to bend. If not, then I'm just going to grab it and pull it out with the plier. Nope, i got to bend it. So. Okay, so we've gone ahead and bent the cotter pin back over. Um, I know we didn't see that, but that's okay. So that cotter pin had to be bent around so we could pull it out. We'll pull the cotter pin out. And I'm going to drop it down there. We'll reuse that later. And then this pin here, it slides out. If I can get my hand in there to get it out of there. And when that pin comes out, it'll basically free that shaft up. Okay, there's the pin. And that pin holds the actuating rod to the pedal. We may have to pull this switch out later, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But really, it's pretty simple. Pull the cotter pin out, push that shaft out, and then this rod is free. This is on the back side of the master cylinder, and the brake pedal is just kind of dangling freely. So that is it. That's really pretty simple to get that part out of there. So now what we're going to do is go up to the top side, pull these bolts that are like right around here is where the bolts are on the back side, I think, somewhere anyway. But we'll pull those out and then uh, pull the master cylinder out and swap the new one in. Okay, so as promised, we're back up on the top side now. What I'm gonna do is loosen this nut here, which is a 7 16 I've got the uh, flare nut wrench. For those of you that don't use those and use an open end wrench, buy these. They're uh, designed for this. So what they're to do is to help keep from tearing up the threads. So I do have the blue towel underneath it so that if it dri drips a little bit, which it probably will drip just a little bit, but all the lines are, are empty. So hopefully you can kind of see what, it, what I got going on. Let's see if it's, if I, yep, my hand. Okay, that's loose, that's loose. And no drainage. I'm gonna pull that line back out of the way and I'm gonna leave that there. As I've said before, you wanna make sure with brake fluid that you clean it up immediately if you get it on paint because uh, it's not kind to it, so. Take care right. of your paint, boys. Like I said, that was a 7 16 Now we are gonna go ahead and try to take these three bolts off. I did, like I said before, I went ahead and I hit them with some penetrating fluid. They are a 9 16 Don't lose these nuts because when we go to put the new one on, we are going to reuse those. Be careful up around the, around the edge of this so you don't whack the fender. And actually, I'm gonna take and put the uh, fender cover up underneath it so that if I do, I don't chip paint. This is gonna get a repaint, but uh, let's do that when we need to, not now. There we go. Um, let me go grab a magnet real quick. I'm gonna grab the uh, washers with a magnet. 
Hopefully. Think. Come on. There's one. So we'll use the claws instead. Just like it's supposed to. Let's see if this thing will come out of here now. Oh, there it is. See, now that's the difference. Look at how uh, kind of tiny that is. It's the single pot compared to what's going back in because this part here is this part. So this is a little bit beefier than this. But if you look at the brakes that we put on already, they're a little bit beefier too. So, all right, set that aside. I'm not gonna set that on there because that's clean. We're gonna find a dirty place for it. Okay, since this is a little bit gunky down in there, I'm gonna spray just a little bit of brake parts cleaner in there and then uh, use paper towel and kind of wipe it out because uh, now's the time to clean stuff like that up because there's nothing really in the way. So, wish us luck, here goes nothing. Let me throw that down there. Get that in there. I'm relatively certain at some point in time there was some brake fluid that was dumped down there. Oh, absolutely there was, because there's fiberglass right there. So that is something that we probably will address once we figure out how the, the uh, master cylinder is going to sit in there. The thing about All right, let's see if we can uh, get this thing to fit in there. We're going to do a dry fit first off, and then uh, once we're done with that, get it in there okay because we may have to take the uh, coolant recovery tank and that type of stuff off to get it to fit, but we'll find out here real quick. Yep, we are gonna have to, to unmount the coolant recovery tank. All right, let's try it again. Hold it from this side. No, no, just got to be careful. That's all. Just got to be careful. Okay. So that is in there. We may have to relocate this just a little bit forward or something to uh, get that to fit the way it should once the master cylinder is in there because we are not going to get it in there on that side. Well, all right, boys and girls, this is not going to be as easy as I thought. It's going to be a little bit tight up under here. Uh, I am not going to clearance things for it to fit. If it's up against it, it's just going to have to live right up against it. That's just the way it's going to be. So um, I, I'm not excited about cutting fiberglass or relieving fiberglass because once you relieve fiberglass, you lose the structure to it. So uh, I would much rather have it just rest against it because that's about all it's going to be is just a bare a, a tiny touch against it than to uh, actually try to remove fiberglass not a fan so all right we'll figure it out though and uh we'll, we'll see you before too long okay so uh we've decided that we're going to go ahead and mount it i did not bench bleed it yet uh, because it is going to have to come back out some of the tight spaces and whatnot, I've got to do some location, some fitment uh, uh, research and figure out how I want it to go to make sure I've got the room for the brake lines to come off of it and go where they need to go and still keep them away from any heat sources because we don't want the brake lines close to the exhaust. You don't want to boil your brake, brake fluid because that's going to affect your durability or, and, and how well your brakes work. And so that's one of the considerations that we're making, but we do have to install it. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in, install it. It's not a final install, but at least for the purposes of this video, it's a final install because that way I can close the video out and you can see the that part of it and at least that part's done. When I do the bench bleed later on down the road, I will have that in whatever video that it corresponds to to get that done so that you can see how that works because that is an important piece to see how this thing is put back in properly. So with that said, let's go ahead and, and uh, get this thing back in here. I, I didn't put gloves back on because I'm going to have to pull it back out and I know that. And so... I'll wipe it back down when I put it in there, but uh, that's where we're at. Now the upside to this so far is that for getting the washers back on the top two bolts is okay. I think the bottom one is going to prove more difficult. 
because if you remember the old master cylinder sat right where this tube is so I'm not going to torque it all the way down tighten it all the way down but I am going to put all three of the uh, washers and nuts back on because I don't want to lose them that way I know exactly where they go All right, because you can't see what I'm doing anyway, where well, you're going to have to take my word for it that here in a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and put that back on there. But now is probably about as good a time as any to say, there it is. That's where it's going to rest. That's where it's going to live when it's all the way done. And it is tight now. So, uh, and I do have just a smidge, I think, I hope, of room under there. And so part of the clearance is going to be the brake lines. Oh, I actually have a lot more room back here than I thought I did. Yeah, with it in there oh yeah plenty of room now it's just a matter of figuring out how the brake lines are going to run from the front and the back and get those to go where they need to go i thought i was going to be a little bit too close up to the side here and not be able to actually get it in there but uh plenty of room just a matter of feeding it in there and being able to see it when it goes in there so that's a lot more comforting i do have to worry or figure out where we're going to put the proportioning valve and that's got to mount somewhere in here uh, to be able to make sure that we have the the brakes set the way they should be set or um, and do we actually have to have that in there? So we'll figure it all out and uh, we'll let you know next time on Yellow Jacket Garage or the time after, or possibly the time after that. Who knows? It's adventure and I want to thank Burke again once uh, again for holding the camera Hi. because uh, <laughs> Burke volunteered to come down and, uh, and hang out with me and shoot the breeze and maybe do a little bit of car work. And so here we are. But uh, yeah. Always a pleasure to have Burke down here. If you have not checked out his channel, please do so. You can find him at Road Odyssey on YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com slash Road Odyssey. I'll put a link in the description below. So anyway, thanks again to Burke. And uh, with that said, I think for now, we're good to go and uh, at least got it back together somewhat. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And as always, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hit the subscribe button. I need all the help I can get. They're going up. My subscriptions are going up slowly, but they need to go up a little bit faster. So anyway, hey, uh, thanks for being here, and uh, we'll see you on down the road.